Okay, Cappuccino, here are the notes for our notebook, and I'm also going to do an example of linearizing power and exponential functions. Let's see if I can get rid of this little thing here. Hide, floating, there. All right, here we go. Okay, so here's our notes. I already wrote down a bunch of it. So we're going to linearize power and exponential functions. So we already talked about in the previous video why we would do this. So now we're just sort of putting it in our notes so we don't forget. We can use log-log graphs and semi-log graphs when modeling data to help us determine if we should be using a power function or an exponential function. Okay, so remember power functions, um, some examples of those are like y equals x squared, y equals x cubed, okay, anything where x is to a power, we call that a power function. Okay. Or if we want to use an exponential function. So an exponential function is like y equals 2 to the x, but more commonly y equals e to the x. Okay. We use e a lot, especially in the biological sciences. Okay, so exponential function. This is the form, uh, the gener general form of an exponential function, y equals a e to the bx. And the semi-log graph will produce a straight line, okay? And so when you do a semi-log graph, this is what your table would look like. You're going to have your just straightforward x values. So, for example, if you were measuring time versus um, height or something like that, um, your time would stay the same, but then you would take the log of your heights, okay? Usually this is meant for, like, population growth. So x would be your time, you would just keep your time as it is, and then you would take the, the natural log of your population, okay, because um, population growth is something that often is exponential. All right, so, and if you take the semi-log graph, it will produce a straight line. If it's an exponential function, it will produce a straight line. And so the r value will be close to 1 or negative 1. So it would be close to 1 if it's exponential growth, and it would be close to negative 1 if it was exponential decay. So one thing in the assignment that we were doing in class, the Google Slides that we were doing, I did have you write down what was the r value. And you noticed that when you did the semi-log versus the log-log, with the data that I gave you, you got a higher R value on one of the, um, either the log log or the semi log. I don't remember now, but one of them gave you a better R value. So if you have an R value that's really close to one, then bam, you have found the function um, that you, you can identify the function. So if it's the semi log that gave you that R value really close to one, then you know it's exponential. If it was the log log graph, that gave you an R value close to 1 or negative 1, um, then it would be a power function. All right, so power function looks like this, y equals a x to the b. So notice the difference, exponential function, x is in the exponent. Power function, x is not in the exponent. So we're raising our x value to a constant power, like, like squared, like x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, etc. Okay, so the log-log graph will produce a straight line. Okay, the log-log graph will produce a straight line. Um, and you can know it's straight if the R value is close to 1 or negative 1. Okay, and so you can get a negative 1 when B is negative. So if, you have, uh, if you're raising it to a negative exponent, you're going to get an R value of negative 1. All right. So that's that. Okay, and this is what a log-log graph is going to look like. You're going to take that log of x and you're going to take the log of y, as opposed to a semi-log graph where you leave the x values alone. Just keep your x values and change your y values to the log of y. Okay, so if you have your data, remember you're just keeping your, your raw x data, but you're taking your y data and you're taking the log of each number. But if you're doing a log-log graph, you're going to take the log of both the x values and the y values, okay, quite a bit different. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at, well, how, why does this work? What's going on? So if we take our, we're gonna start with the um, power function, and this directly relates to what you were asked to do on the Google Slides, so this is kind of a helper video for the Google Slides. If you take your power function, which is y equals a x to the b, Okay, here's our general form of a power function. So we um, 
let's see, what am I doing? Okay, <laughs> sorry. So we're going to take the natural log of both sides. So we can do, if we do something to one side of an equation, we can do it to the other side. And then we're going to expand this. So we get natural log of y is equal to natural log of a plus natural log of x to the b. Okay, so using our laws of x of logarithms to help us expand this because this is a times x to the b, so we can change it to a plus. Now I can use my power rule. I can bring my b down. So natural log of y is equal to natural log of a plus b times natural log of x. And then I'm going to switch these, and you'll see why in just a second. Natural log of y is equal to b times natural log of x plus natural log of a. Okay, I just used my commutative property of addition there. Now, why did I do that? Well, remember, um, we know something is a power function if when we take the log log graph, when we make the log log graph, when we take the log log graph, if we get a straight line, then we know it's a power function. And see, here's what's going on. We have natural log of, of x, that's basically our x value, and natural log of y, well, that's our y value. And if we take data, you know, and we um, find the equation of the line through these points, well, then the number that's with the x, see the x is natural log of x, here's my x, the number that's with the x is going to be the slope, and the number that's by itself is going to be the y-intercept. So that's why I switch these, because now it looks like y equals mx plus b. Okay, so now it looks like y equals mx plus b. So therefore, let me write it again. I didn't quite need to do that, so let's write it again. So therefore, my b is my slope. And natural log of A over here, that is my y-intercept. So when you're doing your linear regression and you get your equation of your line for your log-log graph, that number that you get for the slope is going to be the B value right up here. Okay, So that's in y equals ax to the B. Okay, So that means this is my slope. Here is my slope. This is the slope of my linear regression from the log-log graph. And then I can get my a value, and we're going to do that in an example, but um, from my y-intercept. So I'm going to use the y-intercept to help me find my a value for my power function. We're going to do an example of that right now. Okay, so next page. Your data, when converted to a log-log graph, produces a linear regression of y equals 3x plus 0.2. Find the values of a and b, hence write the power function. Okay, so we're going to try and write the power function now that we've taken our data and we've done a log-log graph. Now we are going to go ahead and see if we can write, well, what was the, what is the function, what's the power function that's going to model this data? Okay, so I have my equation here, y equals... 3x plus 0.2. And we know from what we just did over here that the, um, the slope, the slope is going to be my b value, and the y-intercept is going to be my natural log of a. So this 3 is my slope, and slope is equal to the b value. And then here is my y-intercept. My y-intercept is equal to natural log of a. Okay, so I don't know a right now, but I can write an equation and I can solve for a. Okay, so right now, hence, right, we're going to, therefore, b is equal to 3. Okay, I found my b. And natural log of a is equal to 0 0.2. Now I can solve this for a. So to do that, I'm going to rewrite it in exponential form. So remember, natural log means it's base e. So this means e to the power of 0 0.2 is equal to a. So I can rewrite this in exponential form. e to the power of 0 0.2 
is equal to A. And then I can put that into my calculator, which I already did. And I get A is approximately equal to 1.22 using three significant figures. And so then my power function, and I know it's a power function because it was a log log graph that I got this equation from. So they, if they hadn't told me it was a power function, the fact that it said log log graph means that it's gonna be a power function. If the log log graph gives me a straight line, then I know it's a power function. Okay, so my power function therefore is gonna be y equals 1.22x to the power of three. Because here's my a and here's my b. Okay, so remember power function is y equals a Oops, x to the b, sorry. a x to the b. Okay, that's how my power function. So I can substitute in my numbers for a and my number for b. All right. So that's also to help you with your Google Slides because it asks you to solve for a and b and write the power rule, power function for the data that you were given. All right, next. What if it's an exponential function? So we're gonna do the same thing that we just did for the power rule. Now we're gonna do it for the exponential function. Okay, where's my pen? Exponential. So my exponential function is y equals a e to the bx. That's my general form of an exponential function. And I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. So um, that's what's going to linearize it. And when I do that, I can now expand. So notice, you know, everything I'm doing is a valid algebraic move. I just took the log of both sides of the equation. If you do something to one side, just do it to the other. Now I'm going to expand this. That's a times e to the bx. So I'm going to get natural log of a plus natural log of e to the bx. Now I'm going to use my power rule. That's going to bring the bx down in front. So natural log of y is equal to natural log of a plus bx times natural log of e. And now we should know, oh, natural log of e is just equal to 1 because e to the first is equal to e. So when you have natural log of e, that's just equal to 1. So I can simplify this. Okay, this just equals 1. So therefore, I'm left with natural log of y is equal to natural log of a plus bx. And now I'm going to rewrite this, use my commutative property of addition, and write natural log of y is equal to bx plus natural log of a. And why am I doing that? because this is the equation of a line. So remember, this is coming from a semi-log graph. So a semi-log, I keep my x value, and then I take the log of the y value. Okay, so log of the y value, that's the y. There's my y. So y is equal to bx uh, plus natural log of a. So therefore, this is my slope, the number with the x, that is my slope. And then the natural log of a, that's my y-intercept. So when I have my linear regression, the numbers that I get for the slope on my linear regression, that's going to be my b value up here, my exponential function. And then the number that I get for the y-intercept is going to be the natural log of a. So just like we did in the previous example, then we would go ahead and solve for a once we know what the y-intercept is. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and do an example. So it's the same example as before, except this time I'm telling you that we have a semi-log graph. So if it's a semi-log graph that's giving me the straight line, that means that it's an exponential function. Okay, so you got to pay attention to that. Is it a log-log graph or is it a semi-log graph? If it's log-log, then it's a power function. If it's a semi-log that's giving you the straight line, then it's an exponential function. Okay, we saw that in the previous video. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the power rule. I'm going to take my linear regression, y equals 3x plus 0 0.2. And I know that the slope 
is equal to my B. And I know that the y-intercept is equal to my natural log of A. So therefore, I already know B. B is going to be uh, 3. And then my natural log of A is going to be equal to 0 0.2. OK, we did this on the previous example. So we can rewrite this base E of A is equal to 0 0.2. Change it to exponential form. So E to the 0 0.2 is equal to A. Therefore, A is approximately equal to 1.22. So then I can go ahead and write my exponential function. Since I know it came from a semi-log graph, my exponential function is what I'm going to write. Exponential function. I get y is equal to 1.22e to the 3x. And there it is. All right, so hopefully all of this helps you with your assignment in the Google Slides between these two videos. If not, send me an email and let me know what you still need help with. All right, that's it. I am done.